Good morning, if it's morning where you are. If it's evening, this practice would also be a really nice wind down. Uh, so this is a mellow morning flow, 30 minute practice with your host, Michael Dinney. And I'm joined here today by my pug, Lenny. You'll see him in a moment. He really likes the yoga blocks, so he'll probably be eating them very shortly, uh, as well as my cat. My cat doesn't have a name. We just call her Cat. I know, it's very sad. We've tried a lot of different names, but Kato is the one that's stuck. So let's get started at the top of our mat standing. And you'll need two blocks and a strap. We'll just set them off to the side for now. And we'll meet in mountain pose, bringing the legs together. And as you're standing tall, loop your shoulders up to your ears, back, and then down. So I'm going to call this the shoulder loop. They go forward, up, back, and then down. And you could do that a little bit faster as a fluid movement. And so as the shoulders roll back, we try to lift the heart up, moving into a bit of a back bend. And you can really make use of this in your yoga practice. If you bring your knees to the floor after plank, then you really roll or do the shoulder loop to move into your upward dog or your cobra, whatever it is you do. And this has the effect of getting us out of front shoulder dominance and more into engaging the upper back in between the scapula, the shoulder blades. So let's bring that awareness into our mountain pose. Loop the shoulders up, back, and then slightly relax down. Not down all the way. There's still a little bit of effort to lift and retract. Very gentle. Now with an inhale breath, spread the arms out like wings. Go to about shoulder height, opening the chest. And as you exhale, slowly come back down. Again, inhale, spreading the arms. Engaging between shoulder blades for this range. And then exhale, slowly come down. And we'll do a few more like that. Inhale, opening up. Squeezing between shoulder blades. Exhale, down. Last one. Inhale, spread the arms out. And exhale, relax arms by the sides. And now we'll add the second aspect. So inhale, spread the arms. And then reach forwards, joining the hands in front of the chin. Exhale, reverse the movement, returning the arms down by your sides. Again, slow inhale, spread. Around shoulder height, take the arms forward, spreading the shoulder blades apart. And then exhale, coming back, mountain pose. And do a few more on your own. As the shoulders come forward, the idea is to keep the chin behind the arms. So depending on how the neck is feeling, uh, you might choose to lift the chin if that's feeling comfortable for the neck. And once more. Now on the exhale, arms out to the sides, bend your knees and take the hands down to your shins or touch the floor. Round your back. Inhale, lift the heart halfway. Exhale, step to plank position. And we'll take one breath there. Exhale, lower your knees down, and then slowly bring your hips to the floor. Good. Now lift your hands off the floor for a moment. Good. And see if you can feel the upper back engaging. Now try really lightly touching the hands down and then loop the shoulders up and back a few times. Find that big circular action. And you may even find that by doing that, your heart lifts away from the floor. That's actually what we're looking for. That's a really good thing. And this can really uh, start to change the way that you may approach things like low plank, especially if you're doing it in the context of a yoga practice where we usually do a back bend afterwards. There's other ways to do low plank that are great as well. Keep the elbows a little bit off the rib cage and try taking the hands wider than shoulder width. Now on the next one, we'll come into full cobra. So you can lift the feet, bend the knees. Inhale, rise up, pulling with the arms. Exhale from the core. Sit back towards your heels for puppy stretch. Hands further forward, bowing the head down. And we'll hang out for a few breaths. Think of the heart melting towards the floor and the abdominals contracting to move the front ribs into the spine. So it's a very gentle effort. <laughs> a 
Hey, buddy. Easy on the cork, pal. A few more breaths. Try to keep your arms straight. And then slowly lift the head. Take your hands under your shoulders. And as we tuck the toes under, we'll push back to downward facing frog. So it's just like down dog with knees bent. And then move the hips side to side. As the hips go left, turn the feet towards the right a little and vice versa. Bending into the knees even more as the hips go off to one side. And then come back to center, take a breath in. As you exhale, look to your hands and bend your knees. And then step forward, inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold, slowly tucking the chin. Look forwards and spread the arms. Inhale, come up, try to keep the back straight. Exhale, arms at sides in mountain pose. And take a resting breath in. And resting breath out, loop the shoulders up and back. Inhale, spreading the arms, and then reach forwards. Exhale, spread to fold, knees can bend, and then reach for the floor. I'm going to reach for the pug. Inhale, half lift. And then exhale, step back to plank, sit. Take a breath in there, then bringing your knees down. Think of leading with the heart, lowering the hips to the floor. Relax down. Loop your shoulders up and back. Inhale, cobra. And exhale from the core. Downward facing frog dog. Oh, no offense, dog. The frogs are really great, though. So you can bend your knees, push your hips back. Feel free to walk the dog. I probably shouldn't have said that word. You can reach one heel to the floor and then the other. Pedaling the legs out, stretching into the calves, the hamstrings. Fingers and toes are spreading wide. Hey, buddy. Good, now from your downward dog, Exhale to round your back, moving into plank. And inhale, downward facing dog. Exhale, tuck your chin, roll forward through the vertebra. Inhale, downward facing dog. Last one, exhale, roll forward. Head is the last thing to come up, ideally. Inhale, down dog. Exhale, bend the knees, look towards your hands. Inhale, step forward, half lift. Exhale, fold, head to knees. Inhale, come up, lifting arms overhead at the end of the movement. And exhale, mouth and pose. And take a moment to rest, arms at sides. Here you go, buddy. And then we'll loop the shoulders up and back again. Inhale, lifting arms. Exhale, bend the knees, folding. Round your back at the end. Inhale, lift the head. Exhale, step to plank. Good, so take a breath in, holding your plank. You can bring the knees down. Exhale, lead with the heart, lowering the pelvis all the way. And then push up onto the knees on the inhale. Exhale, bend the arms. So we soften the effort a little bit around the belly. That allows us to lengthen the belly. And then push up, do a few more. Um, if you'd like more of a challenge, bring your hands a little bit further back encouraging the heart to go further forward. If that feels like too much, then take the hands forward again, and that'll reduce what we're demanding from the wrist joint. And then think of lowering into a cobra pose. So we're trying to loop the shoulders up a little bit, lower the hips, and then hang out. Pull with your arms, squeeze between shoulder blades, and breathe. If this is too much for your low back, come down a little bit. You might even try lifting the arms off the floor to find comfort. Notice the shoulder heads are really what's lifting, and then we're pulling back with the arms. And then exhale all the way down. So bring your legs together. Spread your arms out to the sides like wings. 
With an inhale, lift the arms, engaging the upper back. Lift the chest and then the head. Exhale, slowly come down. Lift the arms first on the inhale, and then lift the heart, lift the chin. Exhale, lower the head, and lower the arms. And again, inhale, lift everything up, add the legs, and then breathe. And we'll take about three breaths there. Gazing down the nose. Squeeze the inner legs. And then without changing anything, just bring the hands to the floor by the low ribs. Good. And then we'll take the toes to the floor. Exhale, pushing into your hands. High plank. Downward facing dog. Now with your next inhale, lift the right leg and bend the knee. We'll make some big circles in the right hip joint. And listen to the sound of the breath. If you find pugs to be soothing, you can listen to the sound of the pug. It's fairly inescapable at the moment as he licks the microphone. <laughs> and on your next exhale, right foot forward, back foot flat. Inhale, spread the arms, front knee stays bent. Warrior one. Exhale, bend the elbows like cactus branches. Inhale, lift the heart, straighten the legs, straighten the arms. Exhale, bend the front knee and cactus the arms. Inhale, reaching straight up, shoulder width. Exhale, squeezing the shoulder blades as you come down. And again, inhale, reaching up. And exhale, bend the arms, open your chest and take the hands to the waist. From there, we'll step the left foot closer and then lift your left heel, stay on the tips of the left toes, looping your shoulders up and back a few times. So this shoulder loop that lifts the heart, we also want to work with the pelvic floor and the low belly squeezing in and up. And then as you spread through your toes, pick up the left leg just a little bit and start to hinge forward, keeping the heart lifted, upper back strong. Squeeze between shoulder blades and then open the arms out to the sides. Bent or straight, your choice. And then we'll step that left foot back, warrior one stance. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, interlace the fingers behind the back, or you can use a strap in between the hands. And this can give you a lot more freedom to open the chest and shoulders. So we'll loop the shoulders up and back, take a breath in. Exhale, bend your right knee, humble warrior. Bow inside of the right leg and breathe. Try to pull through the arm, squeezing your shoulder blades. If you don't have a strap, a towel is another great tool, or even a shirt. It doesn't have to be very long. All right, then rooting the right heel, engage the buttocks and finish your exhale. Slow inhale to come up and then set the strap aside. And we'll open up to warrior two. Turning the left foot to the side, take a longer stance. Right foot straight ahead. Inhale, reversing the warrior, right arm up. Exhale, side angle, left arm forwards. Inhale, reversing. As that right arm comes up, you could also straighten the leg as an option. Exhaling, we bend the front knee, moving into side angle. And continue exploring at your own pace. Do a few more. The sides of the core are helping to support us as we transition. Many. And then we'll meet in side angle. So bend your right knee, forearm to thigh, or reach towards the floor, top arm by the ear, and breathe. Use the core, turning the left chest open. If you'd like an extra challenge, engage both sides of the core, lifting a little further away from the floor. Not so mellow anymore, but a great little movement. And then come back to warrior two, take a breath in. Exhale, lunging on your left toes, press the left hip forward, 
and then take that left hand to the floor, top arm up. You can stay there or go onto the outer edges of both feet, stretching into the hips a little bit more. Hey, buddy, stretching into those hips. Three more breaths. And then back to center. Lower the hands, step to plank. Exhale, lower your knees, lift your chin, and try to find that little bit of a shoulder loop as you come down. Inhale, cobra pose or upward dog. Exhale, from the core, downward facing dog. And then we'll lift the left leg and make circles with the left hip joint. Big circular movements. Consciously contracting the buttocks to really press out to the left. Going slow is key. And with an exhale, step left foot forward, back foot flat. Good boy. Inhale, spread the arms and rise up, warrior one. Exhale, cactus arms, looking straight ahead. Inhale, lift the arms, straighten the leg. Exhale, bend the arms, engaging the upper back. Bend the front knee. A few more vinyasas there, moving with your breath. And on the next exhale, bend the elbows and hold the waist. Right foot steps closer. Stay on your right toes, lifting the heel. Loop your shoulders. Squeeze the shoulder blades, puff up the chest. This is a great place to stay. Okay, next step, tip forward a little bit at the pelvis, hinging forward. Keep the upper back strong, squeezing shoulder blades as that right leg comes up. Great place to stay. Maybe spread the arms out for an extra challenge. Just adds a little bit more weight to lift as we work against gravity. Strengthening between shoulder blades. This is really about connecting to that little bit of that thoracic extension that's available to us. We often lose it from rounding forward at the computer in the chair. So the upper back muscles get weak, the fronts of the shoulders tend to overcompensate. This practice is offered as a remedy for that. And then landing that back foot, warrior one stance. Inhale, reaching up. Exhale, interlace the fingers behind the back or take the yoga strap. And then loop your shoulders. Inhale, squeeze the blades and try to pull the hands off your spine. Exhale, fold inside of the leg, humble warrior. And breathe there. Once you can find the squeeze of the shoulder blades, you can try to pull your hands apart or pull the strap apart. And that has the effect of engaging uh, opposing muscle groups for more stability. And then very slowly, you can let go of that strap, set it aside. Inhale up to warrior one. And then exhale, open the right foot out to the side, warrior two stance. Turn the pelvis to the side, your left foot is aiming straight ahead. And then inhale, reversing the warrior, left arm up, lengthening left side. Exhale, side angle pose, right arm by the ear, leaning over the front leg. Inhale, reverse the warrior as the left arm comes up. Feel free to straighten the front leg. And then exhale, re-bend the knee, right arm forwards, leaning over your thigh. Moving from the core, continue. Move at your own pace. And look for those short pauses in the ends of the movements. One more of these breath linking movements, also known as vinyasas. And then pausing in side angle, forearm to thigh, or reach towards the floor, right arm by the ear. If you like an extra challenge, lift a little further away from the floor, engaging the sides of the core. Maybe reaching the left arm up, not so mellow. So if it's close to bedtime where you are in the world, keep it mellow. Rest your forearm on your thigh or touch the floor. Okay. 
Inhale up to warrior two. And as you exhale, lunge on right toes, pressing the right hand forward, right hip forward. And then we'll take the right hand down, left arm up, great place to stay. Option two, spin onto the outside edges of both feet, turning the left hip out. And breathe. What are you doing over there, little guy? And with an exhale, look down, lower the left hand. Inhale, high plank. Exhale, lower your knees, and then explore the hand position, leading forwards with the heart. Inhale, cobra pose, pull back. And we'll hold this one for a little while. So imagine that the legs are the snake's tail. Try to squeeze your heels together. The knees could be apart. If you feel any discomfort in your low back, come down a little bit creating a little bridge for the animals to sit on. And then work from the upper back. One of the best things that I've ever learned about backbending is taking the push away by lifting the arms away from the floor. It's gonna really help connect to the upper back muscles. And then you can start to pull back a little bit. The push is just so strong, it's so tempting, that it tends to override all that really good activation and awareness that we're trying to cultivate in the upper back. So modifying is a is a stage of advancement in this context. Good, and then come all the way down. This should be interesting. So we'll take the left arm out to the side, bending the elbow, a little bit more than 90 degrees, and then lean over to the left, gently push into the palm, and stretch into the left chest. You could have your uh, ear on the floor. If it's comfortable for your neck, try to lift the head off the floor. Extra challenge, bring the right arm up to the sky, squeezing the shoulder blade, reaching straight up. And this is a preparation for a wild thing. Open-hearted arm balancing. And then come back to center, we'll do the other side. Wish me luck. So I'll bring the right arm out, cactus branch, and then roll over to your right. Left foot behind you, maybe you stay there, maybe you reach that left arm up and open. And both shoulder blades could actually be squeezing towards each other in this variation. And try to draw the breath from the belly all the way up to the chest. and then come back to the center, very good. So hands-free bow pose, arms out like wings, or cactus branches, I should say. Squeeze the heels together, knees apart, and then lift your knees off the ground, engaging the buttocks. Lift the arms, engaging the upper back, and breathe. And exhale down. Round two, repeat the same pose. Option two, exhale to catch the outsides of the ankles for bow. If you catch, kick back, lifting knees and hips. Squeeze the shoulder blades. Three more breath. And exhale down. Press back onto your knees. And from there, come into table pose. We'll bring both feet off to the left side, straighten the right leg and pick up the right arm. Start by stacking the shoulders, spreading the fingers wide, root through all the knuckles of the upper palm. If it feels really good, keep planting the sole of the right foot on the floor and start to open up a little bit more like a back bend. We use the muscles in the buttocks and the hamstrings, contracting them to help support the right hip joint. You may feel a nice stretch in the front of your hip. Maybe you feel it in the right chest. And then slowly come back. Bend your knees. Other side. Bring your feet off to the right. Left leg straightening. Lift the left arm. Stack the shoulders. Plant strong through the sole of that foot, dig into the heel, 
maybe opening up a little bit more. And these are all really great uh, progressions towards full wild thing. Keep that in mind. And then very slowly bend the knees, coming back to the center. Table position. From there, we'll press up to full plank pose. And then reach your right arm up to the sky, side plank. So next phase, pick up the right knee, lift the foot, and then bring the right foot behind you. Try to keep the heel raised, and then start to open up towards wild thing, just like you did in the last posture. Same actions around the upper back. And then coming back to center, downward dog with the right leg up. Exhale, bring your knee behind your right hand, royal pigeon pose. So you can stay up on your hands. You may want to put a prop underneath the right buttock to help with the balance. We're trying to squeeze the center line to lift the heart. So feel free to stay here with your hands just outside of your sacrum. Loop the shoulders up and back. It's a really proud pigeon. Maybe you can find a stretch in the front of that left hip as you engage the glutes to push the left hip forward. Option two, take your left fingers to the floor. Right hand reaches back for the foot. You can pull it in towards you. If you're feeling pretty open, you can flip the grip, catching near the big toe with the palm up. Kick back just a little bit to create more space around the shoulder, and then lift the elbow. Exhale, releasing the posture. And then slide the block off to the side. Lean over onto the outside of the right hip for full pigeon, walking the right ankle forward. And then you can fold over your shin from there, back leg bent, or straightening if there's more range. If you're straightening the leg, then try to spin it inwards, bringing the left hip bone closer to the floor. Free to round your back. Use this as a counter pose for the spine from the back bending. Hey, Puggy, what's up, Pug? How you doing, guy? You gotta lay off the cork, man. He needs to lay off the cork. Hey, where are your toys? And then inhale, slowly come on up. Exhale, push into the hands, downward facing dog. And then we'll flow into high plank on the in-breath. Side plank, lift the left arm up. You can stagger your left foot in front of the right. This is a great place to stay. Next stage, lift the left knee, bending it, and then try landing the ball of the foot just behind you. Keep the heel raised and start to open up into wild thing. Really puffing the chest up. It does help to reach to the sky instead of going into the overhead range. Imagine holding onto a ladder and pulling back. And that's an expression of the shoulder loop in this very challenging pose. Challenging alignment-wise, not, not so much in terms of strength. And then we'll come back, down dog, lifting the left leg. Exhale, royal pigeon, Raja Kapotasan, so knee is behind the left hand, and you can support the uh, left buttock on a yoga block. Wiggle the right knee back a little if possible. So notice how the pelvis is lifting away from the floor as we squeeze the midline. Loop your shoulders up and back. Consider staying here, pressing the right hip forward. Pull the left hip back. Option two, take the right hand down to the floor or a block, and then reach your left hand back for the foot, pulling it in towards you. And if you have that super range, you may have to sit a little bit lower to tap into it. Palm up, catching near the big toe. Keep pressing the right hip forward. A few more breath. And then looking forwards, exhale, strong core to let go. And then we'll set the yoga block off to the side, lean onto the outside of that left thigh, and wiggle the foot forward for pigeon posture. Inhale, lift the heart. 
Exhale, folding over your shin. You can relax, round your back. Option to straighten the leg if you're quite loose. Little, little guy. Inhale to come up. Pug ASMR, the, the soothing sounds of pug chewing cork. Exhale from the core, down dog. Inhale to high plank, hands forward. Exhale, lower knees, hips. Cobra on the inhale, looping shoulder. Exhale from the core, downward dog. And then lower your knees down for one last back bend, camel pose. So you can keep your legs parallel. Think of squeezing the midline and then loop your shoulders up and back. This is the main part of the pose, is lifting the heart and integrating the shoulder loop with parallel legs. So keep lifting your heart, and then engage your core to move back in space as the hips press forward. Play around with this action. This is really where it's at. And this is the piece to unlock for all the other back bends. Good, so then we'll pause. You can either press your hips forward and lift your heart, pausing at the start, Option two, use your core to go back, catch the heels, and then holding onto them, relift the heart. In either pose, you're welcome to slowly take the head back, stretching the throat, and we'll take five slow breath. Squeezing shoulder blades, squeezing inner thigh muscles. And then strong in the core, come up. Child's pose, sitting back onto the heels. Feel free to modify by going into Pachimottanasana instead, bending the knees and holding behind them. Just easier on the knee joints. Let your spine passively round forward. Then let's all meet in Dandasana staff pose. So come into sitting with the legs out in front, find a long spine, and then loop the shoulders up and back. Instead of pressing the hands down flat, which is a common instruction, let's go onto the fingertips. So this accommodates those with shorter arms or longer torsos. I have like the ideal conditions for hands flat because my upper body is so small and my arms are really long. So let's all do fingertips and then loop shoulders up and back up to the ears, and then back. Okay, so lift the heart, find your shoulder loop, and then bring the hands back a few more inches. And then as you continue lifting the heart, explore bending your elbows just a little bit. Straighten the legs and press them together. And breathe. And keep lifting the heart, squeezing the shoulder blades. and then slowly come up strong core. With an inhale, lift the arms. Exhale, bend your knees, sliding the hands over the feet. Inhale, pull back on the feet a little, lift your heart up. And you can either stay there with knees bent or straight, or exhale, start to fold. If this hurts your lower back, better to bend the knees and lift the heart. Once that feels good, then you may explore folding again to your own comfortable degree. And then inhale, slowly come on up. Cross your right leg over your left leg. Exhale, spinal twist, looking over the right shoulder. Half floor to the fishes. Inhale, back to center. And then switching sides, we'll bring the left leg across. Exhale, twist. 
looking over your left shoulder. So right hand holding the knee or bring the arm fully outside of the thigh as an option and breathe. Lenny, hungry boy. Inhale back to center. Exhale, straighten the legs and slowly make your way onto your back into Shavasana resting pose. Say goodbye, buddy. And thank you for joining Lenny and I for this short and sweet, mellow morning flow. Hope your upper back is feeling good and uh, feel free to comment below with any questions. If this worked for you, please like the video and share it with someone you know who has a bit of a slouch or could just use something energizing to wake up. Thanks, everybody.